you have your Bibles, turn with me to it. You don't even have to stand tonight. First Chronicles. It's going to read one scripture. I think it's timely. So I had the privilege and the honor this week to have a productive week up until today and had time to dissect the one you're reading and God is always speaking. You know, quite often I tell you I don't read my one-year Bible to get a message, but I read it to stay acquainted with God's Word. But the Word of God has been so rich, so rich, so rich, the reading. So First Chronicles chapter 27, and I'm going to read a portion of verse 28. There's a lot of names <laughs> as they set up the genealogy of all the great officials and so forth that God, that David had assigned and positioned in his kingdom. Every position inside of God's house is important. Never think that what you do is not important. The only reason why you will begin to think that what you do is not important because you think that you are doing it for you. Are you doing it for me? Are you doing it for the church? But the word of God decrees and declares that everything we do, we do it as unto the Lord. So any and everything that you do in the house of the Lord is important. No one job is more important than the others. Other, it takes every last one of us to run the organization that God has called us. That's why I want to encourage y'all, for those that has been in this ministry for quite some time, all of you have gifts. All of you were created with gifts and talents and resources that God had put in you and have put in you for the sole purpose of doing business here on earth to advance his kingdom. So no one at this church should be sitting idle Everybody, my God, should be found in some post, my God, to function and serve your gift to the body of Christ. Oh, my God, when you sit on down on God week after week and year after year and you come to church receiving but never giving. I'm not talking about finances because as the great T.D. Jake said, you got to feed what's feeding you. It's called reciprocity. And so if the church is feeding you and you are benefiting from being members or even attending going off of Christ's church, then you owe God inside of his kingdom, my God, to give back and feed back into what he's feeding you from. So you are robbing God, my God, I'm not talking about money. When you come to church week after week, year after year, and you do nothing with your gifts and your talents, you know why? Because you have taken complete ownership of your gifts. Your gifts don't belong to you. God gave you uh -huh. gifts to advance his kingdom. Your gifts belong to God. Who you are belong to God. The resources that God gives you belong to him for the sole purpose of advancing his kingdom. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And any time you decide that you don't want to offer your gifts, my God, you stepped in the, who you have removed yourself from his hands being on you because he created you. What a purpose. Your purpose fit in the house and your purpose fit outside of the house. Everybody's not called to work inside the church. Some people, my God, is called to come get fed and then take what they are learning, my God, and implement it in society. God don't need everybody inside the church. He needs some people out there because that's where it really counts. Eh? You come in here to get healthy to go out there to make a difference. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Amen. And so here we have Joaz in chapter... First Chronicles chapter 27, verse 28. And I can't, <laughs> and I'm just that type of pastor. I, I can't pronounce all these words. It ain't finna try. All these names. All these names. Sometimes I just say the first letter. And then I let my Bible, uh, the, yeah, whatever that's called. Yeah, on my one-year reading, I can push a button and it read it for me. You know what I mean? And I, yeah, so I learned some of these words. But I remember I used to listen to Pastor Jeff over at 3434, my God, Professor Jeff Wolf, my God, and he pronounced these words. I was like, my God, how did this man know all these words? The names, how did he pronounce all these, not words, these names? Oh, my God, yeah. Boy, if you're insecure, he can make you. <laughs> so I'm going to read a portion, and it, and it reads, uh, again, First Chronicles 27, verse 28, and I'm reading the end of 28, and it says, Joash, 
I do know how to pronounce that, was responsible for the supplies of olive oil. Father God, bless this time that we have to sit in your presence and receive. Lord, I thank you for the presence. I thank you for the calmness of the sheep because we know that in the natural, sheep are very scary. But Father God, so as the shepherd of the sheep tonight, as I'm calm, Father God, calm your sheep tonight. Posture us in your kingdom, Father God, to receive impartation from the king of kings and lords of lords. I pray for supernatural revelation to flow up out of my spirit tonight. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for somebody coming to know you if, it's, if they don't know you as their personal Lord and Savior, Lord. I pray, Father God, this message, Father God, encourage and provoke the sons and daughters of this house to be active in the kingdom. I pray if any conviction need to take place, Lord, let it take place. I thank you, Father God, for allowing us to do business at 205 South Sheridan. Thank you for entrusting me, Lord, with your holy word. We thank you for the laws, the decrees, the statutes, and commands of the kingdom. We thank you, Father God, that your methods change, but your character and promises never change. Oh, my God. So we release you and all of your angels, Father God, to have liberty inside of this sanctuary tonight. Soften our hearts. Help us to let go. Help us to receive, Father God, healing. You are a bomb from Gilead, Father God. And so we thank you that you loved us enough that while we was yet in sin, Father God, you came down through 40 and 2 generations and died so that we can have life. Thank you for purchasing us. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for sanctifying us. Thank you for justifying us, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. And again, the last portion of verse 28 says, Joash was responsible for supplies, supplies of the oil. Very important. I want us to focus specifically tonight uh, on verse 28. Mm -hmm. I'd be so full sometime of God's words and of God's word, and it don't always take a lot. Sometimes little is better than much. Come on, somebody. And I'm learning how to just take one point and teach with substance and not try to eat the whole sermon. Come on, somebody. That's a note that my ministers caught. Amen. Know when to let it go and get up off the brakes, I mean the gas. The people in the spirit will let you know God has spoken. Close the book. Sit down and get out of God's way and let him do the rest. You don't have to always finish your points. Hallelujah. And the word of God, as I said, my God, I want to focus on verse 28 by, man, by, name, by the name of man, the man Joe Ash, who was the keeper of the seller's oil. I'm going to say that right there. Come on, Will. Just sit down right there. Joash, a young official, there's a sign in the king's kingdom to take care of a very important duty. But there wasn't no glamour in it. He wasn't in the spotlight, and a lot of times he wasn't even before the people, and sometimes they didn't even see him. But he had one of the very most important offices or jobs in the kingdom. Are y'all with me so far? Okay. Mm -hmm. Here is a man talking about Joash who was in a place of special service to the king. However, his job was not flashy or one that attracted a lot of attention. He served as king, but he did so, write this down, in the dark, in a damp and deserted cellar. He served as king in a dark, damp, deserted cellar. So we're gonna take a look at Josiah I mean, Joash and his job that he was called to fulfill. Remember, he was serving the natural king. And so, therefore, if you understand how the kingdom works, you have the king of kings. That's why it's called the Lord and Savior. As I've taught y'all, many people, my God, they want him to be Savior. Uh, they want to escape H-E-double-L, but they, want him, they don't want him to be capital L-O-R-D of their everyday life at all times. Because when he's Lord, he, your allegiance goes to him. 
Oh my God, my God. They in the Old Testament did not worship, my God. Oh my God, uh, something, my God, that was a, uh, a, uh, 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 what well, they did, they worshiped a lot of idols in the Old Testament. I'm sorry, they worshiped a lot of idols in the Old Testament, my God, but so their allegiance and their loyalty shifted from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and it shifted to the sun God, the moon God. They begin to worship all these different idols who took their focus off of the true and living God that delivered them from Egypt. How easy when you bring it up to our time that we can shift our loyalty, shift our allegiance, and we start worshiping the created thing over the creator of the thing. Are y'all with me so far? I'm trying to take my time for a minute because I want y'all to see this servant, this in the kingdom, was in a dark place. He was in a dungeon. He had a very important job. As I told y'all earlier, everything in the kingdom, naturally and spiritually, matters. There's no job more important than the other. When you start looking at it like that, you'll start looking at people, and then you'll get discouraged. And you'll start saying, God, why am I here in this dark place, and I should be up before the people? I got a gift to preach. I got a gift to teach. I got a gift to do this and that, my God. But if God has placed you somewhere, you are to remain faithful. That's why, my God, it takes patience mixed with faith to do the will of the Father. Are y'all with me so far? So point number one, let's look at the duties of Job. I mean, uh, let's look at the duties of Joash's responsibility. Just sit right there, man of God. He was the one, right there, the keeper of oil. Oil was very important in the Jewish society. It was used religiously. According to Leviticus, and I don't want to read all that, two and one, please write that down. Leviticus two and one. My God, it was used religiously as a lamp for fuel. Oh, my God. And also in Exodus 27, 20, uh, as a medicine in Luke 10, 34. So it was used, my God, religiously, my God, in uh, uh, Leviticus 2 and 1, and it was used as a lamp, I mean, uh, for a few, for a lamp in Exodus 27, 20, and a medicine in Luke 10, 34. All is also a symbol. It represents the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm, mm. In that day, the keeper of the oil literally kept the lights on in Israel. The keepers of the oil in the church today literally help keep the house of God functioning. Do I got any people in the church, my God, that uh, got some oil on their life? And so the title of the sermon is Don't Let Your Oil Run Out. Don't Let Your Oil Run Out. Joash had a major responsibility. Joash. He was responsible for keeping the oil for the kingdom. He had to do his work in obscurity. It reminds me, and God just giving this to me, it reminds me of King David that several sheep dung out there with the sheep. And he was forgot about. It's easy to be forgot about when you're doing something for the king and there ain't no glitz and there ain't no glamour in it. People, teen, teen, uh, uh, people sometimes tend to uh, People sometimes tend to make you feel unappreciated. Come on, Holy Ghost. Unappreciated, my God. People, my God, because the perception of what God has called you to do, may, to them it may not look or feel important, but to you it is important because God gave you the responsibility concerning the job that you are doing. Are you with me so far? And so he was the keeper of the oil, which was a tall order. It was his job to make sure, my God, that the lights was on. Remember the different examples that the scripture used for the oil. It represents healing. It was a religious law that they, was, they were supposed to keep according to Leviticus. And also, too, they used it, my God, as medicine. Mm. Are you listening to me? Uh, do, is there a bomb in Gilead anywhere in her? Is there a bomb in Gilead? Y'all won't pass it to get fired up, but I'm trying to lay this thing right quick. My God. So I want you to understand that that's what God has called you to do. So ask yourself, what has God called me to do? What has God gifted me to do? Ask yourself, what type of awe is God ready to pour out on your gifts and your talents? We don't start living until we start serving our gift yes. to the body as well as to the world. That's when you and I start living. When you and I just doing church, as y'all know, we say we don't do church, we do Christ. If all you're doing is church, showing up to church, and we just reading our Bibles, my God, and doing our devotions and stuff like that, and you don't have not discovered what you was created to do, that's a dangerous place to be in because what happens is we become religious. 
We read our Bible, we come to church, and we do all of the external religious activities. But have you discovered why you exist? Have you discovered the specific gifts and talents that God has given to you to serve to the body? When you discover your gifts and when you discover your talents, my God, God brings all. It's one thing to be gifted. It's another thing to be anointed with your gift. Yeah. All represents also anointing. I'm taking my time for a reason. And so I want you to understand that we are getting ready to launch, my God, a, a, a vision Sunday in this church. Ask yourself, what is my responsibility? Why did God bring me and plant me inside of going off of Christ? What do I have to offer? Well, I don't know what I have to offer. That's where you need to be able to talk to somebody that's in leadership, and you're going to find out who's who inside this ministry. We get ready to clarify everything because many of you have come to this ministry, my God, and don't know who's who and know what all that we have to offer in this church. And so if you don't know what your gift is, do you ask yourself, do you have a desire to discover your potential? Do you have a desire to find out why God Allowed you to still be on earth? Do you have a desire for that? How many of y'all got a desire to know what you call? So everybody in here pretty much raised their hand because they have a desire. They want to know what they call to do. Now, how many of y'all know what y'all call to do? Let me see your hands. The numbers went down. And so for those that did not raise your hand, my God, it's up to you to go to the one that created you, God, who is your source, and begin to ask him to show you why you made it, why you still here. What is my purpose? What did you create me to do? Because your gifts and your talents is within. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven is within, so you got to begin to draw up out of you. A lot of our gifts and talents are laying dormant down on the inside, and you need somebody to breathe on you to help you discover. Leadership has a lot to do with self-discovery. When you discover you, you discover the leader that lives on the inside of you. Think about your pastor's testimony and where I come from. All that you were seeing was already in me, Brittany. It just wasn't discovered. And it took the right people to fan the flames. It took the right people, my God, to speak to my purpose, speak to my potential. See, God is waiting to set somebody up, my God, to send somebody across your path to speak to that when lives on the inside. And so if you're out of position, he ain't got his hands on you. Then, Joe has had a responsibility for the oil. Write this down up on the point number one. Let's get going. He, uh, he had to stay in his place, though. Can you imagine serving in the kingdom in a cellar? It's dark, it's dirty, ain't no excitement. But he was forced to stay in his place. It must have been hard to stay in the cellar. Mm. If you want to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord, just be faithful to him and serve him where he has placed you. I've seen so many people shipwrecked behind chicken scratch. Think about chicken scratch. Many people have removed themselves out of position. Many people have left churches. Many people have left ministries. Come on, somebody. Many people, my God, never discovered what their purpose and potential is because they got offended. I, have, I want to stop by and want you to know that for some of y'all, God has brought you here to help you discover why you was created. God has brought a lot of you here, my God, to help you discover your purpose in life. Because our church, my God, you will see Sunday has a vision, my God, called discipleship. And in one of those classes called Discipleship 2, the late Dr. Miles, we teach from his book called Understanding Your Potential. You have potential. You have a purpose. You have gifts. But people begin to get offended for all type of reasons all over the country. He's sitting in churches and they abort the process before God revealed to them what they was created to do. Because they get impatient with the will of the process. It took a long time. It took 18 years from the day I said, Lord, would you, would you forgive me for my sins and accepted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior? It took me 18 years before I even realized that I was called to be a pastor. Didn't even know it. So about the 16th year is when God started stirring me up. But in the midst of that training, my God, I set up under the great man of God, Bishop Gary McIntosh, who is the spiritual father of your pastor, my God. And he began to watch me and develop me, my God, and help me grow and discover everything that was on the inside of me that I never knew I had. Because everything that was on the inside of me was buried up under a bunch of wrong decisions, gang banging, drug addiction, and everything else. But in the midst of all that, God still had a purpose and a plan 
for me, and he still got a purpose and a plan for you. That's why you do yourself a disharm and a disservice when you let your past dominate your future. When you let your past speak more than the promises. God's methods change, but his principles and promises don't. See what I'm trying to say? And so you and I got to learn how to be patient while God is executing his will in your life. As I told y'all, you have a destiny, a destination, and there's a process to getting to that destination to be fulfilled. We get impatient, and we have not learned the art of learning how to stay put. There's so many churches to go to, my God. Uh, uh, so we just say, okay, that don't work my time. And do you know one of the things we do? We tell ourselves, I have grown that church. So you just take contamination to another church and start contaminating that church. Because we all need a reason, my God, to justify why we're getting ahead of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, teaching. Yeah. Everybody yeah. needs a reason to justify why they're getting here. Why are you making your decision? So you got to find a legit reason, my God, to justify, my God, why you did what you did. And God didn't told you to do that. Your flesh may have told you to do that, but God didn't tell you to do that. I thank God that I didn't listen to my flesh. Why are you sitting up on the Bishop McIntosh? At that time, they, they, the people that I'm th thinking in mind, they didn't call him Bishop. Why are you over at that church? That's a white pastor. I had many friends, and some of them may be looking online, that did not ever step foot inside of Greenwood Christian Center because the pastor was white. Ask yourself, do you got any prejudice in you? I was in prayer today, Sister Johnson, sitting right over there, and I began to thank God for all the Caucasian people that God has used to bless in my life. And I told God today, Pastor Chan, that I'm so grateful that I am not a racist. I'm so thankful that the two times that I went to prison, I didn't adopt that mindset that the Christianity is a white man's God and, and, and white men are the devil. Oh, the devil is a lie. And anybody that's looking online, I thank God. God died for all people. All people got problems. Every race got problems. All people got problems. My God, it's a sin problem. Problem. But I was just thanking God laying right there at six o'clock prayer. My God, I said, God, I thank you. And the reason why I said that because there's a whole lot of good things, uh, a whole lot of divine connections that happened this week. I told y'all I didn't had a good week of phone calls is ringing, meeting people. My God, and all of them is Caucasians. And so I thank God I ain't got that black man mentality that thinking everybody is the devil if they ain't black. The devil is a lie. Going off for Christ, give God a hand for your for the pastor. Because what am I saying? That type of mindset will disqualify you. There's people that God got set up, my God, to bless you. And they don't have to necessarily be white. They could be Hong. They could be Mexican. They could be Chinese. They could be Bohemian, whatever. All this. Come on, God can use who he want to use. Come on, somebody. I'll draw a blank sometime when I'm preaching. But quit disqualifying yourself because a person don't look like you and talk like you. God can use what he want, who he want, and where he want. Anytime he get ready, my God. Quit disqualifying yourself. Oh, don't get me started. I'm trying to teach. Sometimes I, I get my mind get trapped when I slow down. I need to speed it up a little bit. Come on, somebody. Somebody give God a hand. Mm. So you got to learn how to stay faithful. I'm going, I'm going. First Corinthians, write this down. You got to learn how to stay faithful where God has placed you. And see, this is where we make the mistake at when we don't take time to fast and pray and say, God, is that where you want me to be? And so, therefore, when you find yourself getting in a position in a church or organization, my God, and you don't, and God didn't place you there, it's easier for you to remove yourself. But when you are, when you know that you have been placed in a church or placed in a position, it ain't that easy to leave. Come on, because you know that God placed you there. See, it wasn't that easy for me to leave when my friends were telling me, I love you, Jew, but I can't go to that church because this and that. And I didn't turn my back on them. I understand they're not there in their mind. But I stayed in place, my God, and received, my God, everything, champ, that I was supposed to receive, my God, from my spiritual father. And to this day, he's still operating in my life. So I thank God. Oh, my God, I didn't let outside pressure. Oh, my God, circle. Did I get mad at Bishop? Yes, I did. Did, we, did, we, did our relationship uh, butt heads? a lot yes I did but I never left my place because God placed me there when God placed you somewhere you and I don't get to tell God I'm finna get up out of here you don't get to do that I know it's sound teaching I'm just sound teaching some of you might not like it because you you convicted 
So I thank God. And you should thank God that I stayed in place because if I had not stayed in place, you wouldn't be here today. If my God I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Because a lot, thank you, man of God, because a lot of your deliverance, a lot of your healing, a lot of your restoration came being connected to going over Christ's church. So you got to thank God that I stayed in place. I didn't get impatient. I didn't let my friends, I didn't let my homies, I didn't let the perception of African American people calling me to leave. My God, the white pastor that oversaw my life. Somebody needed to hear that. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm just following God. Y'all know I follow God. So you got to remain faithful where God will place you. According to 1 Corinthians 4 and 2, write this down. 1 Corinthians 4 and 2. Now, a person who is put in charge as a manager must be faithful. If God put you in a position to oversee, you must, rem you must remain and be faithful over that what God has given you. Any responsibility that God has given you inside of his kingdom, you should look at that as an honor. Yeah. Quit treating the, quit, thank you, Holy Ghost, quit treating heavenly things like they're tangible things. This is what we're doing in the spiritual realm. Leads to eternal life, gives you eternal life, gives you hope for eternal life. Quit mishandling and squandering away heavenly fruit. Heavenly blessings because you're dealing with and handling it tangibly. The minute you start taking, my God, the spiritual realm, uh, you don't take the spiritual realm serious. You start, my God, violating the spiritual realm. Don't come to prayer on time. Don't come to church on time. Don't come with your Bible. Ain't praying at home. Ain't, re ain't, ain't, ain't reading at home. See, you're not taking, my God, the heavenly realm and the spiritual realm serious. But you get up every morning and go to church. I mean, go to work. Come on, you don't make no apology about going to work and even stay overtime. My God, because you need some tangible money. But when it come, but, but as soon as one o'clock comes, you get up and leave up out of here, but you First Samuel, write this down, 22, 26. First Samuel chapter 22, verse 26 says, To the faithful God, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure. If you want to be in the will of the Lord, then keep on doing the last thing he told you to do until he tells you to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. God says go. So I'm going. Sometimes I taught y'all you got to follow God blind. So God said go. He see that you're coming to the cliff. God, no, he ain't going to let you, even if you fall, he got an angel to come catch you. Read the Bible. See what I said? But he said, go this way, and God sees that cliff. He created it, so he knows there. Yeah. Remember your destiny, and he created you for your destiny. Created your destiny, and he created you. Now go fulfill your destiny. So if you, it's going to be sometime where God will bring you all the way to the cliff and then turn you. Yeah. It's called building faith along the way. Yeah. See, because God knows what it's going to take, my God, for you to operate and handle your destiny. So he got to grow you and mature you on your way to your destiny. And so sometimes he got to take you, my God, all of us to the clip. He might, some of you, take you and drop you off the clip and then swoop, swoop the angels to get you up. I know y'all been in some situation where you like to lost your mind, but Christ gave you ears. Oh my God, well, you gave up on life, my God. God ain't doing nothing but building you. And so you and I got to learn how to trust God. Because God will let you come to those dangerous ends where there ain't nothing else to step on. Come on, Peter, get up out the boat and step on nothing. He was stepping, standing on something, but when he got up, he stepped on nothing. Come on, somebody. That's God building your faith to get you ready for where he's taking you. And so sometimes God let you got to play it. He'll let you get dangerously close. This don't cross that line. Yeah. Are you with me so far? Because God is trying to prepare you. See, he's trying to teach you how to trust him. You got to be able to trust God when you're getting ready to come to the end of a road, or the end of a cliff. Come on, somebody. God said, I'm going to take you right up into the cliff. So, man, you feel like, oh, my God, you got to lose it. He said, I got you. He's trying to build you. So what has God told you to do that you have stopped doing? Notice I said you have stopped doing because he didn't tell you to stop. When you and I, my God, step him up under his hands, all we did is when we just shifted. He's there and you hurt. You still doing your thing, though. You still talking about oh, God. All oh, that's fine. Remember, he's a patient God. And you're going to see fulfillment when you decide to repent and get right back here. Because this is where he's going to make you for that. This over here, you're on the outer court. 
When you get done here, this is intercourse. This is preparation. This is molding and shaping. This is process. This is turned down. This is uncovering and recover. But when you're over here, God ain't doing nothing with that. You're just going through all the formality. When you get here, now you're making progress. But the young servant was sitting in a cellar. He hears all the festivities going on in the kingdom. They sitting around the table eating royal dinners, drinking all that good wine that the king drunk in the Old Testament. My God, all the parties and all the entertainment. My God, he could probably imagine they up there partying and they drunk off of the wine that I'm taking care of. They up there having a good time behind the oil that God is using me to work with in an unnoticed position, down in a dark dungeon, in a cellar, and they having a good time and I'm down here unnoticed. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. That's why I'm taking my time, because you need to get this. Don't put emphasis, my God, on this light, and don't put no emphasis on this purpose. This person right here is more in purpose than somebody that's trying to get her, but ain't ready for this her. Uh, you, you may be gifted to preach, but you ain't got no courage, you ain't got no integrity. You may be gifted to lead, but leadership has everything to do with how you live and how you lead. Leadership has everything to do with influence. So you can have a position in the organization, especially in the natural, but have no influence. You was placed there because he wanted you there, or your boss wanted you there, but you don't have the leadership qualities to, to grow your organization. Anytime God give you any type of thing to do in the kingdom, it's your job to take it and multiply. It's your job to take it and grow it, my God. God didn't call none of us to be maintainers. God don't maintain nothing. Anything he got to maintain, he'll kill it to get somebody to move it to the next level. We got to get past that maintaining, robbing Peter to pay Paul, baby. You got to get past that. You got to advance. Whatever God assignment God has given you to do in the church, take it and say, I'm going to make it better than what it was when I got it. If it was chaos, my God, when I got it, it's going to be orderly when I get through with it. And I'm going to stay right here and shovel sheep dung until God move me to another place. Come on, somebody. I'm going to be grateful that I get to do business in this kingdom until God promote me. Come on. Promotion starts at the bottom before it starts at the top, baby. God will take you from sitting in the cellar, my God, and, and put a crown on your head. He'll take you from shoveling the sheep dung, and now you got a crown on top of your head. The king is shoveling the sheep dung. Everybody laughing at him, my God. But that's the king, my God. And now he went from obscurity, my God, to notoriety. And now he's calling all the shots while people laughed at him, disqualified him. All it take is one moment, and the king, my God, don't get me started. Oh, the king will shift your life overnight, baby. I might tell me you can go from being homeless, my God, to a millionaire overnight, my God. Oh, y'all better ask somebody. Don't get me started up in this church, man. I'm trying to teach y'all. Oh, but y'all got to know how to stretch out faith, my God. Hey, my God. This job matters. This job matters. Learn how to stay in position. Learn how to hold your post. And to God tell you something different. Make sure it's God. Not flesh, not emotions, and not wounds. A lot of people move up out of the thing that God told them to do out of wounds. False perception. The enemy is in your ear. Don't run out of your oil. When you run out of your oil, you start making decisions that God didn't tell you to make. If you faint not in due season, if you stay put in due season, if you stay faithful in due season, if you keep your heart right in due season, you keep loving in due season, don't nobody see you, don't nobody notice you, my God, but you're doing it unto the king, not unto the pastor, not unto the first lady, not unto the church, you're doing it unto the king. As long as the king see you, that's all that matters. Because the king got the authority to shift you. The king got the authority to take you from the cellar and put you to, come on, you can eat at the king's table overnight. Mindset. Those that's working in this ministry, my God, your mindset is unto the king. You're not doing it for me, you're doing it to the king. And so when you can't give the king half-hearted service. You can't give the king leftovers. Oh, my God, you're talking about the king, my God. If you give the king what you feel like you want to give him, you are dishonoring the king. That's kingdom talking and kingdom Bible. You are dishonoring the king when you feel like you just give him any type of worship, any type of gift, any type of service. You can't do the king like that. He'll cut your head off. Go read the Bible. Well, that's not the God we serve today. No, it's not. So what are you, what, what are you, landing, what are you allowing the, the, uh, the God to hold up? So he said him cutting your head off like they did in the Old Testament, and now he's sending locusts and canker worms to eat up the harvest. He's sending trials that he would have protected you from, and now he got to allow you to experience some things because he's trying to get you back in place. He's trying to bring you back down. You got too high and mighty, so you got to send some strife. He might not cut your head off, but he'll allow a little persecution. He'll allow, come on, somebody. That's why you got to learn how to grow in the dirt. 
We get too high, you take you down, back down to the dirt, baby, crush you. That go for all of us. Sometimes we got to be reminded, my God, what you're doing is an honor. Anytime you think it's not, anytime you get to the point where you want to control what you do, you're in trouble. Do what God told you to do. If he ain't told you to do it, my, if he told you to do it, then make sure that he told you to do it. If he told you to do it, make sure that he told you to do it. If he told you to shift, if he told you to move, if he told you to stay, whatever it is, make sure that God told you. Not man, not, not come on somebody, not, not, not make sure that God told you. My God, and when God tell you to do something, it's always order. God would never tell this man, get up and run over there, man of God, to leave his position and leave this unoccupied. When this has everything to do with what's going on in the palace. He's not going to leave this position empty. This is more important than what's going on in the palace. He's not going to, he's not going to tell you to move and then leave and then, then figure out, my God, I need to try to find somebody. When he move you, come down and sit. So now when he move you, go. Now you go. You never miss nothing. That's how God operates in his kingdom. He ain't going to tell you to move and that's empty. When he tell you to move, he already got the person that's going right there to fulfill the spot. Oh, my God, who am I talking to in the church? So if you have left positions and you're doing stuff naturally and spirit, you out of order. Kingdom teaching. Don't let what go on around you discourage you. I heard my daughter's voice when she said amen. Don't let nothing that go on around you with nobody disturb, discourage you. Are you listening to me, Star? Nothing. Move you out of your position where God has planted you and called you to do. Because you're doing it unto the Lord. Anytime God wants to shift, have you noticed there's another person sitting in the cellar? Don't get full of yourself and think that God ain't got nobody else. You ain't the all that's in the muchness, baby. He can replace you like that. He can replace me like that. I'm not the only one that's caught. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I promise you, you ain't going to leave going home for Christ naked. Stay right there, Dominique. You're on the, you're on the show now. Number three. White right, seat down up on the point number one. Oh, my God. You got to get to the point where you watch for intruders. <laughs> We're talking about safeguarding the ministry. Uh, he was, talking about your ass, was, was, was uh, uh, oh my God. Mm. Uh, he was to keep an eye on the oil and be sure none was stolen. Okay? Because you remember in the Old Testament, oil represented so much and they needed the oil to do a lot of things in the natural. So people were trying to come and steal the oil. So you got to put people around to guard and protect. You got to, watch this, let me bring it up. Everybody look at me. You got to have the right type of people around you to guard and protect the anointing that's on your life. You just can't let anybody. That's why you can't sit down and eat with anybody. You can't sit down and join yourself with anything. The Bible tells you that in the book of Corinthians, you can't join yourself with anything and anybody. So he was responsible to protect the oil. My God. So, so in this day and time, we need watchers today. That's why you got porters and greeters. We need some people, my God, who, 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 who are wide awake. Oh, my God. Bishop preached many, many years ago a sermon. Christian said, while you were sleeping. It's, you know how many people are sleeping? In the church, sleep, sleep spiritually, no sensitivity, sleep in the church. The Spirit of God will walk and sit down beside you, and you're so dead, you don't even know any scepter. God is nudging on you to come, my God, and you and, and you so dead, you don't even realize he's nudging on you. God is talking to you, you think you're talking to the neighbor behind you, but he's talking to you. Uh, you sleep in the spiritual realm. And when you sleep spiritually, my God, the enemy comes in, my God, to snatch your kids away from you. Ah. Oh, some of you men need to wake up, my God, to be priests, prophets, and kings of your home. And quit letting the enemy come and just take your kids and take your marriage and rob you of all this type of stuff. While you out doing your thing, my God, ain't no prayer, ain't no covering. The Bible says, my God, when, when, when Samuel's son for, the, for, for, for David, my God, the Bible says David left the sheep with another shepherd. Uh, oh, my God, men, don't just leave your home to anybody. You got to be careful who you allow to protect, my God, what God has given you. Yeah. You just don't leave your home with anybody. Yes. Just don't leave my kids with anybody. Yes. You just don't leave your responsibilities inside the church with anybody. Yeah. 
The Bible says, my God, that David left the sheep when he went on, my God, with another shepherd. A shepherd got a heart. He didn't, he didn't leave the sheep with a hired man because the enemy would have came in. The hired man would have ran off and left the sheep. But a shepherd will die with his sheep. You can't take these right here. God gave these to me right here. That's what you got standing right here. You got a shepherd. You ain't got a hired man. That's why I still don't draw no salary. I ain't for hire. You can't pay me. I got a pastor's heart. Yeah. And that's why it's uncomfortable because I got a shepherd's heart. I ain't got no pastor's heart. Pastors will preach to you, but a shepherd will shepherd you. Think about the body of Christ. Think about what's been done in the name of a pastor. I don't want to be known as pastor. I'm a shepherd. I'm on record. The office has been misrepresented badly. Boy, they look. The Bible says David left the sheep with another shepherd. A shepherd has a heart for the sheep. When Samuel called for David, he did not reach in his pocket and get some money and say, here, I'm going to pay you to take care of all these people. Because if he would have done that, and if an intruder or a danger would have came, you would have broke and ran. But a shepherd going to stay right there and fight and die with the sheep. I give their life trying to protect the sheep. There's a difference. When you know God is giving you responsibility, you got to have a different level of focus, a different level of commitment. You can't be easily swayed. You can't be easily offended. You got to protect. Let me get up off of that. You got to protect what God has given you to it. He entrusted you. Like he gave one one talent, one five talent. I'm a two talent, one five talent. He gave you talents, gifts, my God, my God, for you to increase. Your gifts, my God, make room for you, my God, to increase. If you're not using your gift, my God, you're robbing yourself of opportunities to go up in God's kingdom. If you're just coming in and sitting down on your gifts, my God, you, 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 you're doing yourself a disservice. When you should be up here, you're down here because you didn't sit down. You're down. Gifts, my God, when you serve your gifts to the body, when you serve your gifts to the world, my God, it opens up door for God to increase you and elevate you. You know why? Because he can trust you. That's why the one with the five went out and increased and got ten. I love Serving your gifts brings you to increase. Promotion. Sitting and receiving and pregnant. Many of you are pregnant. You passed nine months. Men and women. You're pregnant, men. Yeah, pregnant. Some of you right now, God is bringing you to the point of delivery. You walk around the spiritual realm like you know how a woman when they're pregnant. You got to tell yourself, I got to push this baby out of her. I'm coming up on nine months. I'm eight months and I got one more day to go and I got to get this baby up out of me. You got to get past that. Push out. You're pregnant with purpose. You're pregnant with greatness. You're pregnant with destiny, church. And every duty that you have, God gave you that. And if you're serving in this ministry and you don't feel like you're in the right place, set up something with the staff so we can make sure that you're in the right place. Because, my God, uh, you would do me and this church disservice if you are serving in the place you don't want to be in. Yeah. You're going to easily quit. Yeah. It's just like a puzzle. If you put a puzzle together, champ, and you put the piece of the puzzle in the wrong place, all it's going to do is pop right out. Because you're out of the position. Yeah. That don't mean you're a bad person. You're just in a place serving where you ain't supposed to be serving. You in somebody else's spot. But you remember, you don't leave your spot unattended to. You don't leave your position unattended to. A good leader always trains his replacement. You should always be working yourself out of a job if you have any uh, a leadership position in the organization or in the church. Work yourself out of position. And a good leader always reproduces himself. They looking for a man. They looking for a woman that they can pour into, that they can give some of this life to. They can give, my God, and help them become, my God, what God has called them to be. A leader ain't intimidated by somebody, my God. Many people, when I find, oh, my God, if I see somebody, my God, trying to keep people at bay, don't want to bring nobody and build a team, my God, because you worried about somebody taking your position, that's the day you lose your position in this church. Y'all yeah, missed that. If you refuse to build your team, because you're worried about who's going to take your position. Can't nobody take what God has given you. When you get in your spot, can't nobody be. My Dr. Miles told us, when you find your spot, can't nobody. That spot was created just for you, Tanya. Ah, oh my God, she might have operated in your spot, but she can't never take your spot. Because God created it for you. Remember, you got a destiny, my God. He created you for that. You the only one that can do that. Now, he will bring people to help you do that, but they can never take your spot. 
That's because you don't understand kingdom. That's why you do church. Church people leave. Church people get offended. Kingdom people understand that. The Bible is about a king and his kingdom. It ain't about the church. That's why Jesus said, my God, repent. Thank different. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Do you got any oil on your life? Oh, my God, y'all quiet on me. So you got to keep the intruders away. Let me move deeper. Time is getting me. Uh, you got to stay wide awoke. Uh, my God, you got, you, got, you got to make sure that, 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 that the oil is not stolen by these thieves. Right here, write these thieves down. Watch this, star. Let's talk about these thieves. Let's look at the thieves that, store, that comes to, 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 to steal your oil off your life. Y'all ready? Y'all want to know some thieves? I promise you, and when you, I begin to call them out, if you're dealing with it, don't turn your back on it. Own it. Because it's the reason why it's now exposed. You've probably already been praying about it. And now God has allowed your pastor to mention it. So as God trying to reveal it to you, I see you and I hear you and I do something about it. Anytime God reveals something to you, it's for you to make a decision to do, it, do something different. So let's look at these thieves. The number one thief, another thief is complacency. Are you complacent? When you come to church, are you coming just to receive or are you coming to serve? Another thief, apathy. You don't care if you ever do nothing for the kingdom or not. You don't care what type of legacy you leave on the earth or not. Apathy. I'm just going through the motion. It is what it is. That's the way it was for my grandma. That's the way it was for her grandma. That's the way it was for her grandma. That's the way it was for her grandma. That is not concerned about anything. Not concerned about the growth, the healthiness of the church. Not, not concerned about your sisters and brothers. This, 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 this existing. Sometimes we get so focused on us and our foe, we forget about everything that God. Don't you know that some of the stuff that you escaped? Don't you know the hell that God and bought some of you out of? God bought you out of that so you can serve that gift. So you can testify about the goodness of the Lord. That's why you escaped that hell fire. That's why that didn't kill you. That's come on, somebody, because God, God want to use it, my God, to help somebody else. Yeah. So change your outlook about the things you are experiencing, the things you are going through, and understand, turn your misery into ministry. Yeah. Yeah. I taught y'all that last week. Many of us is misery, but so okay, God, I'm miserable, my God, but I'm going to turn this into a ministry. Yeah. So if I'm dealing with complacency, it's going to be a ministry. What's that ministry going to be? I'm going to find the people that I know that I'll never see doing nothing. I'm going to say, hey, Laquetta, I noticed I've been going to this church for six months, and I see you on the front row. I don't see you doing nothing else. I think you may be battling the spirit of complacency, sister. That's right. That's good accountability. Yeah. That is accountability. But somebody that's fleshly would say, how you going to try to check me? Yeah. You don't even know you. That's flesh. Right. As long as a person is coming to you in the right spirit, in the right motive, God is all, before you do anything, you pray. And put prayer on and be led by God's spirit. You just don't show up and start checking somebody. Be led by God's spirit. That's what's wrong with the church if we take the liberty to do things that God ain't told us to do. It's a timing is everything. Timing is everything. When you do something, you got to be led by God. You can't even step down without God. Don't let your oil run out. How about worldliness? This isn't true. You got to go. Don't you know you can be gifted and not anointed? Worldliness robs you of the anointing. Habitual sin robs you of the anointing. Willful disobedience robs you of God's anointing. Because you need the anointing to do what God has called you to do. Don't you know you need the anointing to even be a mama? You need anointing even to be a grandma. You need anointing to deal with the people that you work with. You need the anointing to cook. You need the anointing for everything. Oh my God, you need the anointing. Uh, I can't get. Uh, 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 oh my God, you need the anointing for everything. But apathy and complacency and worldliness. That's why lifestyle still matters and life, lifestyle does matter. Mm hmm. Ah, ungodly lifestyle, my God, God lifts his anointing up off your life. Because the spirit of the Lord would not cohabitate with a sinful temple. The grace and mercy gives you and I an opportunity to repent and turn from. And that's why we got to thank God for his mercy. Because there's things that he allow, he don't really allow the things that we get to deal with, we, that, we get to, that we be dealing with today, he killed them for an Old Testament. Like, how about dishonoring our parents? All of us would have been dead. Because we all talked crazy and thought crazy and went crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 
when you dishonored your parents, they brought you before the city and the people in the town stoned you to death. Just like that. When you was caught stealing, if you can't pay it back, off with it on. That's why he said, even if your eye calls you to sin, pluck it out. We know Jesus said, pluck it out. Job said, I made a covenant with my eyes that I might not sin against God. And so if you're in the weight room like we are, and you see these women with all these tight clothes on, oh my God, you got to do an about face. Like if I'm in the weight room and I'm doing the machines, my God, and a lady's laying down, working on her legs and stuff like that, there's been times where I had to get up and, uh, and walk away until she got through with her set, and then I came back and did my set because it's right there in my face. The devil is a lie. The enemy is cunning. He's cracked there. What price are you willing to pay to guard your anointing? Well, y'all have no idea the price I got to pay. I just used that because God gave it to me. Worldliness will rob you. Po wanting to be popular. Popularity is another enemy. Remember, Joash was sitting in the street. He wasn't popular. He's in a dark, jury dungeon. In a cellar. Down at the bottom. There's something about the valley. I mean, you know, God is waking on, working on his patience because he had to stay. When he heard the music, the Spirit of God said, stay. When they was partying and drunk off of that good wine, stay. Stay down there and be found faithful. The Bible says that God shows himself, the king shows himself faithful to those who remain faithful. Remain faithful are those who are faithful. So if you are faithful, that means you remain faithful. Yes. Point number two. Let's go. Let me move. Let's look at the disadvantages. There are some disadvantages to this young man. Y'all want to hear him right quick? Yeah. Number one, it was unnoticed. Write that down by man. There'll be some jobs and duties that God would have you do that's unnoticed by man. But you got to remain because God placed you there. And you got to remain faithful. If man don't acknowledge you, if man don't say nothing to you, if man don't pat you on the back, it don't matter because you, you, you got to look for God to pat you on the back. Sometimes God has trained us and he trains us in dark places, y'all. Write that down. God trains you and I in dark places. God don't train you in the light. Remember, David was on the backside. Moses was in the, in the wilderness. Think about the wilderness. Ain't nobody around in the wilderness. Ain't nobody dirt and dry and, and uh, come on, cracks in it. Dark places, it's good training. God sees every effort. Y'all need to know that. Write down Proverbs 15, 3. The Lord is watching everywhere, keeping an eye on both the evil and the good. He's looking. Proverbs 15, 3 says that. Don't worry about what man noticed. Just keep the oil. Don't worry about what man. God sees you. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, my God, the Bible says God seen from heaven and he heard from heaven the cries of the children of Israel when they was in Egypt up on the furrow. The Bible, get this out, he seen. That means God, God, God got an eagle eye. He's sitting up high and he see low. He seen the misery. God sees you. God know where you at. And the Bible says he heard. Not only did he see, he heard. But ask yourself, when he see you and he hear you, my God, can he put his hands on you? The potter, can God put his hands on you? He can only shape the clay, the vessel, my God, the clay, and my God, by putting his hands on him and controlling the wheel, controlling life, controlling the circumstances, controlling the situation, knowing when to leave him in the fire, when to snatch him out the fire. So when you jump off the wheel, my God, you stop developing, you stop growing. When you get out the process, my God, you start dying. Many people have died at 25 and they was buried at 65. Many people have died. They stopped developing at 25, my God, and they existed, but then they was buried at 65. Their potential died. Yeah. They let their potential lay dormant. Let me say it like that. Their potential lay dormant. Their gifts lay dormant. They died. They stopped developing. Anytime you stop developing, anytime you stop growing, anytime you stop serving your gifts to the, my God, to the body of Christ, you die. Yeah. Ain't no neutral in God. You can't stand still in God. You can either, you either move it or you die. Yeah. Mm. So you're going to be doing things in the kingdom that goes unnoticed by man. So if you're looking for man to affirm you, 
Are you looking for your sister to acknowledge you? My God, you got your focus on the wrong thing. Because how you know God ain't got them, my God, doing that to you because he's trying to train you. God will use situations like that. You don't need that. As long as you know it's me and you right now. I got you face to face with me. I don't need you worrying about nobody. Don't look for a man or woman to do nothing for you. I'm trying to train you. That's why God got to get you off to yourself and start the preparation of training you. He's trying to train you for your destiny. And if you need applause, and if you need somebody to always acknowledge you, if you need somebody to always pat you on your back, you ain't ready for real leadership. Because you ain't going to get it. Leadership is a cutthroat job and position. Oh, I know. Thank you, man of God. I know it's tight, but it's right. Yes, Lord. Let's go a little deeper. It was uncomfortable. Look how long he'd been sitting there holding his post, unnoticed, people partying, people kicking it. But he got a stake because that's what God put him at. The cellar, remember, is dark, damp, and deserted. All of God's assignments are not pleasant, y'all. Your obedience, my God, even in difficult places shows you have faith in God. When it's difficult to serve. Oh, my God, when everybody walking out and leaving and quitting on your style, you still there because God placed you there. Oh, my God, and God says, okay, oh, man, she's been faithful. Everybody that walked out, she's still by right her. It's time to bless her. Don't let nothing cause you to leave your position. Remember what you're doing inside of 205 South Sheridan for those that's in here serving in the ministry. You're doing it as unto the Lord. It don't matter who don't show up. It don't matter. I get tired sometimes. Yeah, I get tired of preaching to you all the time too. You think I don't get tired? While you out partying, I'm studying. While you out, my God, playing around, I'm running and seeking God for word. My God, to be able to step and teach you. You think your pastor don't get tired? So when you decide to quit, you quit on me as well as you quit on God. And if I quit on you, then what? If I walk up off of it right now and say, you know what, this is the last church we're going to have. And I'm not giving nobody no explanation. This is it. You're going to be upset with me. Yeah. Won't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? Yeah. See, I makes it personal in this church. So what makes you think you can walk up and say, Pastor, I'm through. I quit. She offended me. He offended me. They ain't showing up. There's a whole lot of people that don't show up. I don't quit pastoring because they don't show up. I preach to what he brings to the church. He told me if I preach, he'll send them. And that's what I do. And so you hear, give God a hand at your ear. Oh, Lord. Let me hear them get out here. Is this helping anybody? Come on, y'all talk to me. Is it helping anybody? Amen. Number three, write this down. It's lonely. This is the disadvantage of working in the cellar and sometimes working in the ministry. It goes unnoticed even by the pastor. Sometimes I, I may not acknowledge you. You be like, Pastor, I've been going hard for this ministry from day one. You ain't saying nothing. Well, don't. If you know me like you profess that you know me, then say, oh, he love, I, I bet I've been praying for you, though. Yeah. I could do more for you in prayer than I can yeah. stroking you. Yeah. That's just a little something to add to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's lonely, though. Sometimes the Lord work is long, it's a lonely work. You will be misunderstood, write that down, and misrepresented. Yes, but every now and then the king, this is why I'm going to pick y'all up and get y'all out of here. But every now and then the king will come to visit. Write down 2 Samuel 19, verse 30. Give him all of it, Mephibosheth said. I am content just to have you safely back, my Lord and my king. To bring a little context to that right there, David, the king, wanted to be a blessing to, uh, to Jonathan. And so Jonathan, Mephibosheth was the only son in his work that was left. And so they said, is anybody left of David, of, of Jonathan? And they said, yeah, Mephibosheth, but he's crippled. He's down in Lodabar. a Lodabar. Lodabar means a place of no communication. He's in a place of dry places, dead places. Lodabar, no communication. Yeah. It's one left, and they said, but he's crippled. Oh, my God. When, when the king asked... Is there anybody left? They said, yeah, Mephibosheth. And the first thing, second thing, they said, yeah, but he's crippled. Like him being crippled is going to disqualify him from the king. See, people always try to tell somebody about your brokenness. They're quick to tell somebody about your mistakes. <laughs> they're quick to tell somebody about your failure. Oh, they're quick to tell you about this and that. My God, he, he, David said, send for him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm for to bring it in. I don't care nothing about it being crippled. The king woke up one morning and just felt good. He wanted to be a blessing and keep his covenant that he made with Jonathan, his partner. 
And so he woke up and said, you know what, it's time for me. See, see, God ain't forgot about you when you're in a dark place. God ain't forgot about you when you're in a cellar. God ain't forgot about you when you're shoving a sheep. Down. God ain't forgot about you. He know it ain't time yet. When the time come, he gonna send the king for you. When the time come, he gonna unlock your prison door. When the time come, he gonna unlock that um, and find out your blessing, my God. Just stay faithful, my God. Just stay committed. My God, then when the king, my God, say, send for him. Sent for him. So David sent for Mephibosheth. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He sent for him. He was in a lonely place, but the king. Don't you know when it's going to be? It just, every morning you need to wake up and say, this is my day. I, I might get to go see the king today. Something miraculous is going to happen for my life. A breakthrough going to happen, my God. A come up going to happen, my God. A miracle. Every day wake up with some expectation. Because this, this me might be the day that your number come across heaven. And God says, now it's time to bless child. Now it's time to bless Tanya. Now it's time to bless you. This might be your day. Wake up with some expectation. When God wake you up, thank God that you got a car to drive. You got clothes. You got food, my God. Learn how to give God some blessings and gratefulness for the little things that you got. And tell God, is it my day today? Is it my day today, God? And go about your business. Go to work happy. I don't care if you don't like the job because you're there for a reason. Because God's trying to teach you how to be in a lonely place. How to serve unnoticed, my God. How to feel like you forgot about God is preparing you for your destiny. So he got to let you sit in dark places. He got to let you feel left out. He got to let you feel like everybody forgot about you. Because he's training you for where he's taking you. Is this helping anybody so far? But while you're sitting, I'm almost through. But while you're sitting, don't dry up. Don't get bitter when you feel like it's unnoticed. Don't get bitter when you start feeling lonely. Don't get bitter when your brothers and sisters forget about you. Don't get bitter because bitterness just dries up the oil. Now you ain't got no anointing. Now you offering, my God, broken worship to the Father. It's lonely, and you're misrepresented, misunderstood. Number three, let's give you this. Let's look at the job. This job has a demand on it. What you have has a demand on it. Stay until the king calls. I only got two points, and I'm done. And I'm not going to take long. Stay. Whatever position you're in, and you're a member of this church, and you are serving as officials and subject in God's kingdom, and you know what you are doing, God has placed you there, and you are operating in your season, yes, it's going to get tough. Yes, people that started with you won't end with you. Yes, people that say, I'm with you, star, but uh, you know what I'm trying to say, that, that's good on the front end. People will tell you that they're with you when you first start. <laughs> Because it don't cost you nothing when you first start. But after you take off running and you get to work and you get to serve and my God, those same people say, I'm with you, they'll fall off. But you got to keep going because you're doing it as unto the Lord. And while you're working, the king is looking. While you're working and shoveling, the king is listening. Oh, my God, you're going to wake up and say, oh, it's, just, uh, it's time for me to bless. I keep calling star. My God must got a blessing coming your way, girl. My God, it's time for me to bless. Uh, the, uh, 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 so I'm going to make you feel bad. So if he bless her, he bless you. You know, already. Come on. So I just said, uh, uh, it's time for me to bless. And it's time for me to bless Keisha. Let me make some of y'all feel better. It's time for me to bless Ronnie. I walked in the door. Uh, Ronnie said, ooh. Pastor, prayer, show work. He caught me coming into prayer. My God, God has already blessed him. But just stay faithful. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. Stay faithful. My God, you have a duty, my God, and your job demands that you stay faithful. Your job demands that you stay faithful. Y'all listen to me. Your job demands that you stay faithful. Show yourself faithful. Scripture says, because when you show yourself faithful, God will show himself faithful. You want everything from God, but we too unfaithful. Everything causes us to shipwreck. Everything causes us to stop. Everything causes us to get bitter. God, oh, stay oily. Because it's going to take all to do what God has called you to do. You got to, Brother Mike, when he played a good time, you got all them strings. That's the strings going to break. You got to make sure you tighten them up right. You take, tighten them too tight, it's going to break. If you ain't got enough oil on them, they're going to break. Some of it is cracking. You ain't got no oil on your life. Too bitter, too angry. Get offended too easy. That stuff right there dries up the hole. Yeah. And then you got to come off of the church and try to serve people and you're cracky. Yeah. That's why I want teens. Oh, my God. So when you're out of order and you don't feel it, ain't your son. You can sit down, somebody step right up because I don't want you wounding the sheep because right. yeah. you ain't got no oil on your life. Yeah. 
trying to serve with a nasty, burnt up attitude, my God. Hurt God's people. That's everywhere. I ain't just talking about going over Christ. That's everywhere. A shepherd shepherds the people. Be faithful until he changes. We was faithful at 34, 34 for five, almost six years, right there, sharing a building with Pastor Jeff Volf. I thank God for the elders of Pastor Jeff. We was faithful there for five and a half years. We cleaned that church. We did everything in that church. We was faithful. And look what God has gave us in six years. God said it's time. Come look at this. Say one time. One time. Your job wasn't finished at 3434. Your assignment, Lawrence Peoples, was not finished. Going home for Christ, your assignment wasn't finished. It wasn't time. Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time and a place for everything. Don't you know that seasons change? That was a season of five years. Some of you are dealing with stuff, you're like, man, if I got to go through this for five years, I'm about to, yeah. If that's how long it takes for you to learn your lesson, it will take five years. You determine how long you stay in the midst of a storm. Like if you submit and surrender and learn your lesson, the sooner and quicker you do that, the quicker God will move on to the next training phase. Oh my God, y'all missed that. Oh, as soon as you learn, he moves you on to the next training phase. But we was faithful. See, these are principles that it's easy for me to teach you on some man because I live them. Yeah. We was faithful. And still, faithful to Bishop McIntosh 18, faithful to Pastor Humphreys over there, Pastor Champ. My God, for the nine months he was there. Faithful, my God, to the sheep. We oh my God, since we birthed this ministry. We remain faithful. Yeah. And that's what God has called you to do. Be a faithful mama. Be a faithful grandmother. Be a faithful subject in the kingdom. Be a faithful husband. Be a faithful wife. Children, honor your parents, honor your father. Faithful as God blesses that stuff. You cannot succeed without obeying the laws. Here's the principle. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things, what things? A list of blessings, my God, a list of, of resources that God will give you. He says, seek the kingdom first and I will give you. All this stuff, the very thing that we wake, that God wakes us up for, we go to work, we want to have food, we want to have clothes, we want to have car. He said, if you seek me first, Minister Tina, I'm going to give you all that. You running after that stuff, and God said, that stuff supposed to run after you. You running after all of those stuff, God said, if you seek me, I'm going to give you that. Uh, you should be running after money, money should be running after you. Boy, that's kingdom, y'all ain't ready for me, man. Y'all ain't ready for me. Whole oh, nother level. Seek first the kingdom, and he said, I give you these things. But you look at it when we wake up in the morning. Our number one goal is we got to get this money because we got to pay for this debt. We got to pay for this because we want this. We seen this purse. We got this in the layaway. You're running out the things that God gave you dominion over. Principle. Work the principles, obey the laws, and they bless you. You only succeed when you follow the laws. Seek first the kingdom. Of God in his righteousness. Lifestyle matters. And all the stuff you're running out of. All the stuff, my God, that you're trying to accumulate. Yeah. And godly is not, my God, don't determine, my God, how much stuff you got. Don't determine how godly you are. Yeah. See, they looked at it in the Old Testament. The more you got, the more godly they thought you was. Quit running out the stuff that you already own. Yeah. I don't know who you are, my brother, in the middle section, but God bless you. God bless you. Right behind you. Yes, sir. Raise your hand up again, sir. Raise your hand up again. Jenna, right here. Talk right behind you, Jenna. Yes, sir. You. You. Raise your hand. Father God, I decree. Yes, Lord. Whatever he came for, whatever he needed to hear, Lord, I thank you for this man of God in the name of Jesus. I don't know if I ever get a chance to see him again, but his first encounter with you at going off of Christ is a memorable one. He would never forget what you said. So, Father God, whatever he came expecting, Whatever he needed to hear, whatever he needed from you, Father God, decree this day forward, Lord, that it follows him instead of him falling out the head. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yeah. That brother been helping me preach the gospel. Whoever you are, I give God the glory. Uh, let me give you this last one. But stay until the king calls. The king going to call you forward. The king going to call you up out of the dungeon. The king ain't going to call you from outside the backside. Oh, here that ba, she, ke, da, la, la, ba. 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. When you encounter Christ, change take place. If you, when you encounter truth, because Christ is truth, change take place. You have encountered truth tonight. Some changes should take place. Yeah. Some mindsets. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for handing him that, uh, daughter. Mindsets should change. You can't encounter truth and stay the same. Come on. Um, yeah. You got to uncover so you can recover. Yeah, yeah. Many of us that serving in the ministry, are you serving with the right attitude? Are you serving with the right heart? Do you got any oil on your life? Oil also would help you love people when they don't deserve to be loved. Yeah. When did we get to determine yeah, yeah. when somebody need to be loved? Yeah, yeah. And up on number three, I know many of you close your book, but listen to this. Don't come out from under, don't, don't come out under any circumstances. If you're in a cellar, stay there. If you're on the backside of the mountain, stay there. If you're in a prison cell, stay there. God going to unlock the prison. He did it for your pastor, Shemaine. Yeah. But I had to learn some lessons inside that cell. He had to refine me. He had to put his hands on me. He had to slow me down and set me down. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Boy, that'll preach. He had to slow me down and set me down just so he could put his hands on me to mold and shape me. And then when he snatched me up out the fire, <laughs> Nehemiah 6, number 3 says this in my closing. Nehemiah 6, 3. I am engaged, Nehemiah said, in a great work, so I can't come down. Why should I stop working when Sambalat and Tobiah tried to come in and make Sam, uh, Nehemiah quit his assignment? He said, I'm carrying on a good work. He said, I'm too focused. I'm taking care of King's business. I'm on an assignment that's bigger than this world. I'm held with a responsibility that I'm going to have to give an account for when I stand before God. Oh my God. God has given me a position in the kingdom, uh, and I'm going to have to give an account to the king yeah. when he sent for me and asked me, How am I conducting my affairs inside of his kingdom? Everybody's going to have to give an account for how you managed, steward your responsibilities in God's kingdom. Nehemiah said, I'm carrying on a great work. The enemy will always try to get you to stop. The enemy ain't always the devil. Most of the time it's our flesh and our own perceptions. Wrong expectations. What enemy has come and tried to discourage you? What has happened to make you want to quit? Lord, thank you. This ain't law right there. What has happened? It takes a special person who will just stay put and serve the Lord. Even when there's harassment, oh my God, even when there's difficulty, even when you're fatigued, it takes a special person, my God, who cares more about the Lord than about self. Self will make you quit on God. Can you serve in the midst of harassment? Can you serve in the midst of fatigue? Will you continue to show up when everybody else don't show up? I know you're counting on this person because he or she said they was going to do this, but they didn't do it. My God, have it caused you to back up on God? Remember, you're doing it as unto the Lord. And there's lessons that God got to teach you and I uh, while we sit down here in this lonely place. It gets lonely at the bottom, they say. In the natural, but in the spirit, Dwayne, in the spirit realm, Naila, uh, God got to get you off to yourself so he can put his hands on you, so he can prepare you. Yes, you're going unnoticed. Yes, you feel like they don't appreciate you. Yes, you feel like pastor they forgot about me. Yes, my God, ain't nobody saying nothing to me. Yes, I'm fatigued. Yes, I'm being harassed. Yes, I'm being laughed at. Yes, I'm being misunderstood. But I'm doing it unto the Lord. Every now and then I have to remind myself. 
that God called me, not the people. And there's been time, because I'm just a transparent pastor, there has been several times, and my armor bird will tell you, and some of the pastors will tell you, that this pastor right here got fatigued, felt unnoticed. Begin to ask God, have you forgotten about me? Many nights I've had to talk to my wife. and Even my daughter said, Daddy, you just do it so easy. I never knew you were struggling like that. She said right there. You make it look so easy. I never knew, Daddy, that you were struggling like that. Pastor Juju. I felt unnoticed. I said, God, you said preach holiness. You said preach truth. It seemed like everybody is preaching a watered down gospel. Don't hold the people accountable for nothing. Don't never talk about sin or nothing. Just let the people come, preach to them, and send them home. Them are the churches that's full. People don't want truth. People don't want you to encourage them to live right. You do that, you like the devil to them. When did holiness and righteousness inside of God's kingdom tell? Stop mattering. These are the questions that I ask God. Seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And when you preach righteousness, they crucify you. They leave your church. They don't want to be, be, be around you because you got a standard of holiness. You don't compromise when you ain't in the pulpit. You keep it on a dollar no matter where you at. When did that stop mattering in the kingdom? These are my talks to the heavenly father. When did loving the people have to hurt so much? Young pastor, don't draw a salary from the church. Been pastor for six years. My God, that counts for nothing. God, help me understand what you're doing to me. Showing the people that I love them. This sacrifice, even my marriage at times, almost to the point of divorce for you. That don't matter, God. So if I can't quit, neither can you. Thank you for allowing me just to make you understand that what I preach, I live. 